Mark Smith is the president and CEO of NowCorp Developments Limited. Mark, welcome to the Investor Intel studio via Skype. Thank you, Fred. As always, it's an absolute pleasure to be here and to talk with you. Well, thank you. Now, uh, we're, we're, we've caught you in, uh, in Colorado, and uh, this, this is another story that's been on wheels uh, in, the, in the market uh, of, of recent. And I think we should just start for those that don't really know about the use of the metals uh, for you to give us a little rundown on niobium, titanium, and scandium, please. Perfect. Um, let's start with niobium because that was really kind of the foundation of, of what we were looking at uh, when we first uh, discovered this ore body. But niobium uh, is, is an element that you add to steel production and it makes the steel much lighter, but it makes the steel much stronger. Uh, it has the added capabilities, however, of providing some very good temperature and corrosion resistance. So it has some really uh, phenomenal applications in things like oil and gas. When you get into the, the deep water drilling or the fracking uh, that everybody hears about today, uh, niobium-based steel is really, you know, there's no substitute for, for that material in those applications. And it's largely because you need the, the strength of that steel and you need the corrosion and the temperature resistance associated with it. Um, interestingly enough, though, oil and gas is the second largest I'm sorry, third largest use of niobium in the world. The first largest use is actually in uh, architectural buildings, bridges, and, and road construction. And that really goes to the strength that niobium adds to the steel. And again, makes uh, you and I as, as you know, uh, inhabitants of buildings or as we're driving across bridges or over roads, it makes it safer for us. Uh, the, the agencies and, and governments that put a lot of the infrastructure in like to use niobium in, in construction of those items because it up because of that corrosion resistance can actually provide a much longer life with the, these infrastructure requirements as well so again number one use of niobium is infrastructure number two use is actually the automobile and this is one i actually like to talk about the most fred because i think most people can really touch it and relate to it very well um, when we put niobium into the steel in, in an automobile it does two things for us. One, it makes you and I safer as the, the owners of that automobile, just in case we get into any accidents. I know that never happens for you and I, but, but for others. And then second of all, that niobium makes that car a lot lighter. Um, only about $9 worth of niobium in your average car can actually reduce your fuel usage by about 5%. So this has been a primary method of the automobile industry to achieve the mileage requirements that the EPA has on them, the CAFE standards as they're called, where they have to have so many miles per gallon in order to pass those tests. So those are your three primary uses, uh, architectural and, and uh, infrastructure, uh, the uh, oil and gas industry and automobiles. There's a whole bunch of others uh, that, that are also very important, but much smaller in terms of volume. So it's a big use, about 100,000 ton per year market, uh, you know, two and a half to three billion dollar year uh, market right now. So it's it's significant, and it's one that, that we certainly are excited to be involved with. Um, your 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 mine, the Elk Creek uh, project, is in Nebraska. Uh, you announced earlier this year that you've done a, a pre leach test uh, that was successful. Um, what are the other stages of of you advancing this to production? You know that probably the best way to describe our metallurgy right now, and, and there's no question, uh, metallurgy has been the the, the longest and hardest uh, part of our, our project to get through. Uh, but I will also say that in my 35 years being in the business, I have never spent a dollar on metallurgy that I've regretted later. So we're going to do this right, and we're going to make sure we understand what this ore is all about and how to process it. What I'm extremely happy to say right now is we know how to process our ore. And now what we're doing are the final pilot tests associated with that final process. But we know how to process our ore. We know how to get probably some of the highest recovery levels for all three of the elements that we're, we're mining the ore for, mm -hmm. niobium, scandium, and titanium. And we're, we're going to be, I think, all a lot happier at the end of the day, even though it costs a little more money and it's taken a little longer to get through this process 
it's better to know what you're doing with that ore uh, before you build the plant as opposed to after you build the plant. These are strategic metals. Uh, the U.S. government uh, has, has been the subject of a lot of writing on investor intel by various uh, authors that we have. Uh, the importance of uh, these strategically to the Department of Defense, for example, uh, has been written about. Could you put the Department of Defense or U.S. contracting in, in the context of Elk Creek, please? Well, we, we think the Department of Defense is going to be pretty excited about this project. Um, you know, there are two elements that we're producing, uh, niobium and scandium, which are not produced in the United States today. And, you know, to me, it's kind of simple. I don't need to see a regulation or anything else from the government to tell me when something is strategic. If you're not producing it in your country, I think by definition, it is strategic. So niobium is a, is a very good example, and, and scandium is a very good example as well. Niobium is produced in two countries today, Canada and Brazil. So by definition, I think niobium is a strategic and critical element in every country in the world except Canada and Brazil. Scandium, on the other hand, is produced in two countries today, China and Russia. So by definition, I believe scandium is a critical and strategic element in every country except China and Russia. Now, those are those are some pretty strong words, but you know, when you think about the importance of things like niobium and scandium in the aerospace industry, and you think about Air Force uh, fighter jets and whatnot, I think you know the lack of having any production in the U.S. and the importance to the United States Air Force really, really becomes a common sense thought at that point. That you have CMC co metals. Uh, and an offtake agreement before you're even in production, that Correct. suggests that they also feel that these are important. They, they absolutely do. And of course, uh, CMC Co-Metals has a 25% offtake agreement with us for the niobium. We also have a 50% offtake agreement with Thyssen Krupp. So actually 75% of our niobium is already um, you know, part of offtake agreements with very substantial, very mature, very seasoned companies and I do believe, Fred, as, as you just noted, um, I believe in it quite strongly as well, that when you get large, uh, mature companies like that that come in at this stage of a development project and enter into you know, enforceable offtake agreements, I think it says an awful lot about their confidence level in this project and putting it together. So I'm, I'm extremely pleased with where we stand on offtake, Fred. I, I think... Confidence is a good point that you make, and, and Mark, I think that the confidence that the market has been showing in Neocorp uh, is in large measure to your leadership. Um, you, you come in as uh, not only a great leader, but also as an investor, you have skin in the game, and uh, investors love that. Well, and I, you know, first of all, let me say thank you for those compliments, Fred. And then I'll note that I am the single largest shareholder in NioCorp, and I hope that that sends a very strong message to the market in terms of my confidence in this project and and our ability to ultimately finish the feasibility study, raise the, the project financing, and build this project. That's where we want to go with this. I also want to say that. Um, uh, with your nice compliments, I hope everybody understands that I have an unbelievable team of people that make me look a lot better uh, than, than, than what I probably deserve. But uh, this is a team effort in this company, and these are hand-selected people because of their technical competence or their experience, uh, but they're all you know, of the same values. We, we all have a very strong sense of trust and honesty with each other in this company and it really makes life a lot better so it's the team that, that makes everything happen it's not ever one individual well mark in closing can you lift the sheet off uh, a little bit and, and tell us what's uh, perhaps in the future for the next couple of months well what we what we hope to hear in the next couple of months are you know some final decisions by the army corps of engineers uh, in terms of navigable waters within the United States. So that's a very big decision for us. We expect that any day. Uh, we expect to finish the metallurgy process and all the pilot tests associated in the next two to three months. Next comes the feasibility study. So those are going to be those threshold items that you're going to see coming in and coming in pretty fast as we get towards the latter part of this year. We're excited about that. We have enough money in the bank to finish those things. 
So we're ready to get to the end line and make our investors happy. Mark, thanks so much. We look forward to an update uh, in the near future. Thank you, Fred. Always a pleasure. Thank you.